Us upon a midnight dreary and wide parted wink and weary. Over many a queen and curious foe, we were forgotten, Lord. While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. To some visitor, I met her tapping at my chamber door. I'll leave this and nothing more. And distinctly I remember it was in the Blake December. And each separate dang ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wish the more of. Vainly I have sought to bore up. From my books there sees a sorrow. Sorrow for the lost lingo. For the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Name less here forevermore. And the silken said, uncertain in rustling of each purple cortain, Thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating to some visitor entreating entrance of my chamber door. Some late visitor entreating entrance of my chamber door. This it is and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, I made him truly your forgiven as I implore. But the fact is I was napping and so gently you came rapping. And so, Fanny, you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you, ere I opened wide the door. Darkness there, nothing more. Deep into that darkness, fearing, long as to their wandering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no attention, and the only word there spoken was a whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and then he came warmly back the word, Lenore. Merely this and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning. So again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something on my window lattice. Let me see then what there is in this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment in this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter. Wind with many a flirt and flutter. In their step the stately reason of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mean of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat and nothing more. Then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smile, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore, though the crest be shorn and shaven, though I said art sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what the lordly name is in the night's Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven nevermore. Much I marvel this ungainly fold and hear discourse so plainly. So stands for little meaning, little relevance he bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being. Every who is blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door. Bird or beast upon the sculptured vist above his chamber door. With such name as nevermore. But the raven. Sitting lonely on the place that bust spoke only. That one word as if his soul and that one word he did out for. Nothing farther than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me as my hope has flown before. Then the bird said nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by a reply, so aptly spoke. Doubtless, said I, what it utters is its only stock and store, caught from some unhappy master from unmerciful disaster, followed fast and followed faster till its songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore, of never, never more. But the raven still beguiling all my fancy into smiling, straight I wailed a cushion seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking I betook myself to linking, Fancy on a fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yours, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly gowned and ominous bird of yours, meant in croaking nevermore. This I said in gauging gusset, but no syllable expressing to the foe whose fire is now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I said, divining with my heat at ease reclining on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight floated o'er. But whose velvet velvet lining with the lamplight floating o'er? She shall press her nevermore. Then, Miss Ellen, the ye are grew denser person from an unseen censor. Swung by seraphim whose folk false tinkle in the tufted floor. Wretch of pride, the God hath lent thee, by these angels he hath sent thee, respite, respite, and nepenthe. From the memories of Lenore, quaff, oh quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore. 
Who's the raven never one? Prophet said, I think of his own. The prophet's jealous. If guard our day there. Whether tempter sends, or whether tempest toss the year is shown. Dis light yet all undoubted. On this desert land enchanted. On this home by horror, how to tell me truly, I implore. Is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven nevermore. Prophet said, I think of his oath. The prophet still, if barred or diesel, by that heaven that bent above us, by that go we mother God. Tell this so with sorrow laden, if within the distant Adam, it shall clasp the sainted maiden whom the angels name Lennon. Clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lennon. Quoth the raven nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting the bird of scene, I shriek up starting. Get thee back into the tempest in the night's Platonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thee shall have spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken, with the bust of bold my doer. Take thee big from out my hurt, and take thee form from of my doer. Quoth the raven nevermore. And the raven never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting. On the pallid bust of palace just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demons that is dreaming. And the lamp light o'er him streaming throws his shade on the floor. And myself from out that shade that lay floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore.